My coping method is driving. My coping method is creativity in nature. My coping method is to throw things at the wall and see what sticks. My coping method is expressing myself through music, writing, and anything else. My coping method is making music. My coping method is using music to heal my emotions. My coping method is running. My name is uh, Christine Tice. I am from here in Kelowna and I am an administrator, a bookkeeper for a company called Designing with Light here in Kelowna. So my coping method is built up and extensive over time. Um, I've gone to a lot of therapy and both physical and mental in my case. Um, I found that for me, talking about it a lot and telling people what happened to me helped me a lot more than some other people find. It's always touch and go with PTSD. Um, postpartum's a bit different, but for the PTSD aspect, you kind of, some people have a lot of issues talking about it and it brings it all back and makes it worse. I found that it was easier to talk through it. Postpartum, Honestly, postpartum is pretty much impossible for, uh, to beat, at least for me, without doctor help because it is very much a hormonal and mental unbalance after having a child and everything being completely messed up in your body. So my PTSD started basically from the moment I got pregnant and then that mixed into the postpartum afterwards. Um, so. Yeah, lots of talking about it, lots of therapy. And then with the therapy, there was a weird method that she used to make you forget all emotion that went along with the instance that your PTSD gave you, which is really strange. And it's a new form of therapy that uh, kind of gives contact to both sides of your brain simultaneously with touch and movement. Uh, so when you're thinking deeply about that moment in time, gradually because of what they're doing to you on your body, um, the emotion is erased from you. And every time you think of that moment again, there's no attachment to the emotion of it, which is really weird, but it worked. <laughs> yeah. Demonstrating wise, so like if she, she would use both hands and be tapping either both of my like shoulders back and forth or she would tap my knees back and forth and I would basically be thinking about that topic and as she's t going through those your mind starts going blank and um, you can still remember the instance but you cannot remember the how you felt about the instance at the time so it helps with moving forward in PTSD um, like for instance uh, one of the worst ones for me was partway into my pregnancy, I got a really severe uh, kidney infection that landed me in the hospital for a really long time. And I had a lot of issues with that. Um, and because I was already like building up from that moment on why my pregnancy was bad, there's many reasons, <laughs> but um, it, it like I can remember being in the hospital and I remember everything that happened there, but I have no emotional connection to it. Again, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere mentally if I didn't help myself physically as well. Um, my daughter's birth um, and her story and how everything uh, ended really poorly. Um, I had, she ended up being a 29 hour labor with a forceps birth at the end. And I had, I don't know if you or any, some people might not know this, but um, 
she was facing spine to spine inside, so uh, the, I had back labor, which is really, really painful. <laughs> so yeah, 29 hours of back labor. And then when she was pulled out, they don't show you this in the labor and delivery ward. They don't talk to you about it. Um, but basically, once you agree to a forceps birth, because that's how she was born, um, they wheel in this table of things and they don't show you what's on the table, okay? Because they don't want to freak you out. But my husband was in there and he talked to me about it later and he's like, I know why they don't show you the table because when they pull out the like spatulas that go into you to pull out the baby, they're basically just giant knives. So they place these things very delicately, delicately in you and then they pulled her out. And when they pulled her out, I got a um, almost fourth degree tear. So um, that landed me with very severe nerve damage, which lasted two and a half years and became, went into reconstructing surgery. Um, in that time, I had to do physical therapy with a pelvic floor therapist. I had to deal with many doctors and much medication and all the fun stuff. So if I didn't deal with all of that at the same time that I was dealing with myself mentally, it wouldn't have worked. So that was one of the ways that I coped with it. Um, exercising, though that's very cliche at the time, helped a lot. Um, uh, yeah, that weird form of therapy, which is like a physical therapy in its own right, and talking. Talking about everything always helped me out more than anything, I think, was just to let it all go by talking. Well, it helps me in every aspect of my life, I suppose, because you can talk things out better, um, deal with things better. I'm not as adverse to getting help, that's for sure, because once you go through such a intense part of your life that always makes you need help, especially when Jane was just born. Uh, it took months before I was capable of doing basic things a lot by myself. It took a really long time for me to not be in like excruciating pain, to just be in daily chronic pain. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I think that's the biggest one in my life is that moving forward to get help and express myself and how I'm feeling a lot better than I ever used to in relationships with my kid, when I've had too much, when I need to pass on and walk away, all that kind of stuff because, I mean, when I, it took me two months after Jane was born to really feel like I had a connection with Jane. Um, I felt like I was just babysitting for somebody else's kid for a long time because of the postpartum. And it came to a head for me when, and, and I think most women in postpartum who get help, this is usually a point where people go, oh boy, I need help, is you're sitting there and your child's screaming at you because they're only a couple months old and all they want is attention or food or something but sometimes you just can't get them to stop screaming and it goes through your head you're like I could just stop it you can put your hand over it and you're done we're done I can't do this anymore I'm done with it and it was this aha oh boy moment where I had to take a real big step back I left the room and went I have to talk to my husband tonight <laughs> and then I went to the doctor like two days later <laughs> so um, that I think I would be a lot faster now in recognizing that before the moment of oh boy <laughs> um, things like that um, I'm better at knowing my own boundaries for sure after talking and dealing with it and all of that so it affects every aspect of your life really once you figure out how to deal with it yourself yeah it was interesting. Um, my husband was always very supportive of my mental health through my pregnancy and afterwards, and he was very much aware of what could happen, so he was talking to me about it every day when he realized that I was angry all the time and I was sad all the time, and I didn't want to realize it until that moment where I 
um, felt like I could end it, right? Um, so, because I knew that my immediate support system was all for me going to the doctor and getting the help I needed immediately, it was probably easier for me, but not many people have that. So it can be definitely way harder than it was. Um, it was mostly the, the shock and understanding of what point I had let it got, like get to before getting help with it that was more of a scary moment for me. The thought that I was going to, for not knowing how to say it nicely, suffocate my kid to get out of it before getting medication and help, that was my scary moment compared to getting the help. Well, at first I was just trying to fix my physical stuff. And then I went into, um, I took Cetraline for postpartum. And then when the physical stuff wasn't getting healed well enough, and the postpartum had left so the Cetraline went, um, I still didn't really realize what was going on that made me have, like I wasn't depressed, but I was having nightmares, I was having issues, like there was just all around problems. So my PTSD didn't cause depression for me, it just caused like, it caused not sleeping, it caused issues with me and my kids' relationship, it caused issues with me and my husband's relationship, it definitely caused issues with sex, I don't know if that's a conversation that's great for this, but yeah. caused issues for stuff like that. Um, I was also still in a fair amount of pain um, because I hadn't had reconstruction surgery yet, which is not a great time. <laughs> but, um, so I went to pelvic floor therapy and my pelvic floor therapist uh, suggested that it was more than just physical pain that was causing me all the problems that I had. And she got me into mental therapy and that's where all my coping came from and realizing how much more I had to talk about it and how much more I had to cope with it and that I did have PTSD and it wasn't just a issue because I had PTSD from pretty much the moment I got pregnant because it wasn't a great moment <laughs> to um, or like finding out wasn't a great moment that's what I meant <laughs> all the way into a very very bad labor from the moment till the end so um, Really, the, the, that's when the coping really started and how it came about was dealing with the physical aspects afterwards to gaining the real coping me mechanisms that weren't just being medicated, which only help to an extent. Yeah. Postpartum was about a year and a half. Um, from the moment, probably about a year-ish, maybe just over a year from when I actually started getting help for it, I think I probably was unmedicated for four months, maybe, about there, uh, before I really got help for that. Um, and then it was once my body regulated itself back to a standard normal, <laughs> I could get myself off of my medication and move through life. And then I, that's when I realized there was other problems. <laughs> so, yeah. Five years, definitely not, because I never even thought I would go through it, right? Like, I've gone through other things in my life that have created forms of PTSD, but never to the extent of what I am now. Like, I've had issues with men, as most women do, that create forms of PTSD. Um, but, like, to this severe degree, no. So five years ago, I never would have thought I would have had to go through anything that I went through now. I always wanted to be a mom, but my mom, my personal mom, always had such easy pregnancies and easy births that it was never even in my, the forefront of my mind to go through it poorly. Um, when it comes to from the moment that I realized how wrong things were after Jane was born, no, because there was definite moments um, 
where I didn't think I would care to continue. And I don't think I thought as far into the future as that <laughs> went in that regard. Once that passed, once the postpartum really passed and I could regulate myself with medication, again, I didn't think I had postpartum, so it resets itself. And then when I got off of that and realized I had postpartum, it was a, and I was still in severe pain, it was a long journey of, am I ever not gonna be in chronic pain? Mixed with, am I ever gonna sleep? Um, I still take off and on like melatonin and sleeping help at night because I have such issues sleeping. Uh, even with all of my, the help that I've gone through, it never really goes away. You just cope through it, as you know from all of this. Um, but I'm, I'm happy now we're talking about another kid. We're moving forward. I never, never thought after having Jane that I would have another child. And I'm at the point of definitely wanting another child. So that's a really big step. So, but yeah, no, I never would have thought I would get here ever. <laughs> talk to people sooner and about more things than just this like this one really demonstrated in my life how much of a support system that you can have that you don't realize that you have whether it be your friends or your parents or your partners or anything like that because there's other things in my life that I definitely could have gotten help with and out of way faster because I was in a really bad relationship for a long time before my current husband um, and I could have left way sooner if I talked to people. Um, I definitely would not have made it through anything in my pregnancy, to my labor, to anything without my husband. Because, oh boy, you want to talk about the perfect man who's in your face telling you it's going to be completely okay after you've blacked out from pain during labor. <laughs> and are coming to screaming in somebody else's face. That was, that was a big one, but yeah, it's really just, I would have told myself to talk. And it's always about letting it go and talking and getting it out because I never had that before. Very gradually, um, doctors are incredible with it. At least my doctor specifically, I'm very lucky in the doctor I have. His name is uh, Dr. Boshoff. Can't scream his praises enough. The moment I walk into that office and say, this is what I feel like is wrong, he's like, let's do a million tests. Unlike so many women I know who are told, well, maybe you should lose weight first. Or are you sure you're, it's not just like your period? And it drives me nuts because I have friends who have doctors like that. Whereas mine, from the moment that I went in and said, I think I have postpartum, he's like, medication. And that was it. I didn't have to explain myself. It just went. So, and I know so many who don't have that. Yeah, it's always been a taboo. And like, it's like almost like women don't want to talk about it because it makes them feel like it's going to happen to them. When people don't realize, I forget the statistic, but it's really high in how many women get postpartum after having a baby. Like, the amount that your body goes through and changes, it's a war zone. Like, from the moment you get pregnant, I had, um, I forget the name for it, but chronic morning sickness for eight straight months. I didn't hold food uh, during my pregnancy. Like, I went through every bad thing you can possibly think of. <laughs> so, um, like, your body just is shutting down almost from the moment just to give everything to what is inside of you. And, it's, it's no wonder that your m mental health and brain shuts down after the fact because your body is just done. So I wish that women talked about it more. Um, it wasn't talked about even, like it was talked about, but it wasn't so much with me until after Jane was born and my husband was very much the one to be like, are you sure? We should talk about this because I think this is happening. So, and the fact that it's, it's weird because the fact that it was mostly a man in my life to make sure that I was talked to about it and pushed forward to get the help I needed for it is wild. Like it should be more moms and grandmas and aunts and sisters that are the ones that are like, hey, I went through this. It can happen to you. It's not a bad thing. We can just get help for it. 
So it's one of the reasons why I was so up to doing this is because hearing it from a woman is so much easier than hearing it from a man who you go, well, you never did this. How can you tell me this happens? Which most of my doctors were men too. So yeah, that's probably, I, I wish it was more. Uh, I think it's getting better gradually, very gradually. I find that mental health is changing in general all around. I think that, I kind of like what I talked to you about doctors before, we still have a long way to go for women specifically because they just, like the doctors don't like to listen to our pain. It's a big problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think there's, a, there's still a stigma, like I have men in my life who hate the idea of talking to somebody about their problems and don't think that it's worth it to them because it's nobody else's baggage but theirs. And it's so hard to listen to because it's like you, there's so many people dedicated to you to help you through it that keeping it all to yourself is just detrimental. And I think for me, one of the biggest pushes is to help men specifically talk and women after they've talked to get the help instead of, it's, it's so weird. It's like a catch-22, men don't want to talk, but once they do, they'll get helped faster. Women want to talk, but when they do, they don't get helped faster. Oh yeah, um, it's also influenced how I parent. So, um, I mean, I never grew up in an aggressive house. My parents, I can definitely say, and this is weird to most people to hear, I am, one of the very lucky few people I know that can say that my parents never gave me any trauma <laughs> in any form and I just am happy to go to them with anything um, but there you still look at things where you're like ah, mm, I would have done that differently and I feel like with my coping mechanisms and the help that I've gotten and how I talk about things has helped me be a lot more patient and um, I know like a lot of people don't really talk about or think gentle parenting is stupid. Um, and I'm kind of in the middle. I don't think hard parenting does anything for a child. I think that screaming and yelling does nothing for a child. Um, but being the type of gentle parent that some people talk about where it's like, well, could we please not do that? That doesn't work either. You kind of have to be right in the middle. And I feel like over time it's, with my coping mechanisms, everything, it has really moved forward into that and really helped with how I deal with my daughter who wants to come see us. <laughs> uh, doing what's best and right for yourself, uh, putting yourself first as long as you can. I mean, to be fair, my kid comes before me a lot, but my mental health also has to be good for my kid to thrive. Because if I'm angry or sad all the time, she's never gonna wanna be, she's never gonna be happy or glad to be around me. So, and I'm the primary person in her life. So, um, yeah, making the right steps for yourself and moving yourself forward to make yourself happy because what is anything worth if you just move through life unhappy? It's cliche, but it gets better. I mean, it takes a lot of hard work and it's not easy. And I went through a lot to get where I am. Many doctor's visits, a lot of mental therapy, a lot of physical therapy, surgery, but it was worth it because I now want more kids. I have a beautiful daughter who is the joy of my life a wonderful husband who stuck with me through every moment from start to finish and I couldn't ask for more so it does get better with the hard work that it takes.